All right, so you're looking to increase the value of a home. Well, hey, so do I, and I think every person who owns a home should work on different ways to increase the value. Well, my name is Luis Mendez, and today I'm going to show you 11 ways on how you can increase the value of your home by starting first on the curbside. And to get started, if you can, please like and share this video so that way all your friends and family can also find ways to increase their value. And hey, here's a good tip. If your neighbors are increasing their value of their home, that means your house is also going up in value as well. And that's always a win-win for me and for you. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is paint the front door. And, you know, it's by, you know, depending on the age of your home, you know, your home could have been bought in the 70s. Like my house is bought like 100 years ago. But... There's different, you know, things you want to do, and, and giving it a fresh paint of coat, you know, will definitely give that spark and make your house stand out apart from the other. You know, here's a study that shows that just with painting the front door to like a navy blue, a dark gray, or a charcoal, uh, have sold these houses sold for fifteen hundred dollars more on than uh, than the other other average homes. So mind you. A, bucket of paint was going to cost you about 30 bucks. $30 to $1,500 makes a big difference. So if you can, that would be the number one step is, you know, it's a small process, not going to take you three weeks and you probably don't even need a, a professional. Just, you know, take your time and, and work on painting the front door. The second thing will definitely raise your value of your home and it'll make your home actually look newer which is getting a fresh paint of the exterior of your house. You know, when you paint the whole house, that's going to cost you a little bit more. I mean, we're talking about maybe around $5,000 high, you know, higher if your house is bigger, lower if your, if your house is a little bit smaller. But you're going to get back probably about 68% of that value that you spent on that on your house. But it's you want your house to sell faster, especially in a time like this, in a crisis where, you know, people are scared to buy homes. Well, if they see, put it this way, if you see two new cars or two cars from 2008, right? You know, that's pretty old, but you see two cars that from 2008 and they're both at 120,000 miles an hour. But you see one car that has the original paint and the other car that has a fresh new paint on it. Or, you know what, they probably don't even know it has a fresh new paint. It just looks newer. Most people are just going to go to that newer car versus the other one, and it's going to sit on the market. It's going to stay there. Same with your house. If you paint the exterior of your house and it looks newer, it's going to sell a lot faster, and the value of that home is going to be worth more. You probably might get quite a few bids if it's priced right. Now, number three. A lot of people may not think about this, but updating the house number you know if it's 6615 or 123 elm street or you know 511 you know whatever the number is you know majority of people have like that standard bronze old from the 70s and 80s look to it or that you know that black number that's probably been faded and it's you know it's no longer black it's gray well i would suggest upgrading that to something that pops out and if you can't find it at your local hardware store like a Lowe's or Home Depot, try going on like Etsy and see what other people have done and see if you could order a number from them. It's, a sm it's going to be a small investment, but it's a small add to your house that will make it stand out differently from the other homes. And when you have a realtor taking out a client and showing homes around, your house is going to stand out once they see, hey, look, it has a new door, a new painted door, the, the roof, the whole house has been painted. And look at this number. I mean, it, it, it's going to stand out and it's going to attract the buyers to your house. Now, number four, the exterior lighting. Now, here's, here's one thing about safety. Depending on where you live, you know, at night, People like to feel safe. Now, if your house is dark at night, you know, it's not just about crime, but it's also about critters out there. You know, you when you're walking outside at night, if you're coming home late from work or late from an activity or, hey, you live in Florida, you come home late from the theme parks. You know, you want to go to your house and make sure you feel safe. Well, if someone wants to buy your house and 
you know, they find out, hey, what does the nighttime look like? Because people, if they like a home, they're going to drive back and forth and see what does the neighborhood look at night and what does it look, you know, during the day. But when they see at night, they see it has a lot of light. It's going to present itself to be safer. And then also during the day, if you have some light fixtures, you could either change them for a better one or if you have some existing ones, you could repaint them and like make it a little bit nicer, make it look newer. So that way when people see it, it looks completely new. It looks like you replace it, but in reality, you just painted it. So those are really good tips and it's gonna also match. Hey, it's gonna have the same thing with the front door, with the new painted house and the new numbers when they see the light fixtures and the extra lighting around the house. They're gonna see this is a better house for me. It's the last work for me. And there's most likely they're going to tell that realtor, let's put an offer on this house. Number five, depending on where you live and how your house structure is, some people have their trash on the side of the house. Now, if you're looking at it from the front, it looks kind of ugly. It looks trashy. I mean, if you have a fenced yard, you know, the nest is not necessarily towards you because you could hide your trash this way. But number five is hiding your trash. And there's different ways you could do that. You could put out a little fence on it, you know, especially if you live in a neighborhood with the HOA that does not allow you to have a fence. Or if just the way your structure is and you don't have enough money to put a fence around your whole yard, at least from the front view of the home, if you could hide and put up a fence, just a one-sided fence that will cover the trash and everything behind it, your yard is going to look cleaner and neater. And mind you, when someone's out looking for a house and they see that this house is clean, it's neat, it's organized, it's painted, you know, their mindset is going to be like, this house is, you know, well taken care of. And if, if it's well taken care of, their mindset is like probably everything else is taken care of. But if the outside and everything looks trashy, they're going to be like, oh man, if this is bad, I wonder what's worse inside. What, what are the things we can't see? They probably didn't take care of the house. So, which leads us to number six, cleaning the roof. Now, a brand new roof could cost about $10,000. But here's, a, here's the thing you can do. There's different companies that'll, you know, wash your roof. And it's, it's a soft wash. They put a little chemical in there. And, you know, the eight, you know, depending on the pollution, what's going on, if you have a gray roof or, you know, a light tan roof, you know, the pollution and the rain on there kind of makes the, the roof look ugly. Well, they could, you know, there's companies out there that are to clean your roof and it's a lot cheaper than replacing your roof if your roof doesn't need to be replaced. But what it does, it gives the appearance of a newer roof and it gives the appearance of less work. So if I'm going to buy a house, you know, or if I have um, a client, at least every single one of my clients, they always look at the roof. Oh, look, it looks newer. Oh, it looks nice. You know, these missing shingles, you know, the inspector's going to go up and see the missing shingles. But if your roof doesn't have any missing shingles, it just looks really dirty. By cleaning your roof, it's going to stand out compared to everyone else, especially homes that are about 15 to 20 years old, like houses that are in the early 2000s, you could tell, especially here in Florida with all the hurricanes that we've had, you could you could see the uh, the shing. You like, okay, this is uh, the house is a 19 or uh, 2004, 2005. Most likely is going to have some missing shingles, but when you see a house that's been taken care of and it doesn't have any missing shingles, but it has a clean roof. Their mindset is, you know what, this has more value. And the inspector probably might even say, hey, this is, might be a newer roof, and that'll save you money on your insurance. But this leads you also to number seven, is pressure wash everything. Now, if you can, pressure wash your house. You know, if you, if you can't afford to paint your house, you know, and your house at least looks nice, pressure wash it you know i've i've gone door knocking many times and just the front of the house is full of cobwebs is full of because everyone's going through the garage so they're not really paying attention to the front of the house where the door is at and it's full of you know wasp nests and you know it's, it looks really bad and if you're going to go door knocking or if you're going to uh, bring a client to your house and they see um 
uh, the front door is full of that junk, it makes the house look really trashy. So if you could pressure wash the front of the house and also pressure wash your steps, pressure wash the bricks, pressure wash, you know, the driveway, the sidewalk, the side of the house. You know, every little detail that you can, that's, you know, and make sure when you pressure wash, try not to destroy the paint. Like, you know, there's different, you know, settings you could use. But when you pressure wash a house, it'll give it that new look. And if you live in an area that's full of humid, humidity, you know, it's going to have mold. If your house is white, like my house is white. I pressure wash my house at least once a year, you know, if not twice a year to keep it looking new because, hey, it's white. White gets dirty. You know, um, I, if you have oak trees around pollen, you know, the wind, the rain, it starts to stick on. And when you even even if you get a regular hose and spray it down, you can see the color comes off. You know, the dirt slowly comes off. But before you sell your house to add that curb appeal, you know, pressure wash your house the driveway you you know you won't even think how dirty your driveway is or how dirty your sidewalk or your steps is until you start to pressure wash it and then that gives it a totally new look and then even compared to the neighbors your house is going to look brand spanking new so that's that's going to be a really good thing that you should really look into if you can't um if you can't paint your house but if you can't paint your house pressure wash first then paint, which it'll probably do a lot better. The next thing to do is eight, which is replace the mailbox or upgrade your mailbox. Now, you know, if you live in a house for such a long time, your mailbox probably looks the same. You know, if you haven't pressure washed it or if it's falling apart or if it looks old, maybe you could sand it, you could stain it, you could paint it, you could wash it. You know, you want, that's, this is part of your front house, or you could put a little flower bed around your, um, around, um, the mailbox. You know, you, this is your part of your front yard, so you want it to be something that eye catching, something that brings attention, something that looks beautiful, that's easy to take care of, but it looks nice. And that's gonna, you know, the, it's not going to increase the volume, but it's going to increase the looks. So you're going to get more looks. You're going to get more people to notice the small little details. And when you do these small little details, people think, okay, if you're willing to do this little, you're probably willing to do a bunch of other little things as well. And which leads to the other, the next step, which is uh, your flower bed, your garden, you know. Uh, if you if, if you live in a house, it wouldn't be bad to upgrade your garden, upgrade the the flower bed around your house. You know, add something pretty. If you already have some flowers there, or if you already have a garden bed, put some mulch down, uh, put some other flowers you get from the store. You know, make your house look very presentable, almost like putting the wrapper or a bow on a present. You know, when you add beautiful flowers that pop out, or nice shrubs, you organize it really well, put really nice um, mulch around that's, you know, kind of like that red mulch that kind of stands out. You know, it'll make your house stand completely different from the other houses where a lot of people are not going and doing these extra steps. And by doing these little things, you know what, you could actually increase the value by people wanting to bid more. Or you could actually, it, it'll make you stand out more compared to somebody else who's probably at the same level. If you, both houses are at 250 but one house is completely taken care of, you could probably list your house for about 260 and, you know, get away with it. The next is an outdoor living space. Now, this is not so much of a front yard, much as a backyard, but, you know, People want a space where they can sit down on a porch. If you have a front porch, have your porch look presentable, something that you, people could socialize with. You know, nice furniture, nice outdoor furniture in your front porch. Or if you have it in your backyard, have a nice porch, you know, something where people could social have a social gathering outside. Now, in the South, there's a lot of homes that have porches up front, which is really nice, but people want to have a social gathering uh outside is it there's a a thing i was looking up shows 87 percent 
of home buyers want an outdoor patio, whether it be in the front yard, where it, in the front where it's like the porch, where you have a little swing set or you have a little uh, bench where you could talk to people, or hey, in the backyard where you have your barbecue and um, you know your outdoor patio, but you want to have a space where people can socialize and it looks really presentable, have it look new and nice. And the first thing people are gonna say. And I'm telling you, first thing people are going to say when they see this is, hey, I can see us having a birthday party here. I can see us talking out here. You know, I can see us, you know, having coffee here and reading a book, listening to a sermon or whatnot. So they could picture themselves living there. And when they leave, they're going to say, hey, I want to put an offer on this house because I can see myself living at this place. And last but not least is fix the driveway. Um, if you live there for a while, if you got trees, you know, sometimes the trees might break up the driveway. This might be a little costly, but if your driveway is falling apart or if erosion has, you know, lifted it, turned it around, um, or if your driveway looks new, hey, you can at least pressure wash and maybe add a little border to it. Add something to your driveway that looks different from everyone else, but don't go too exotic but keep it looking newer, nicer, shinier than the rest. But this is a big factor because people are thinking, oh man, the house is nice, but this driveway, I mean, it's half of the front property, at least most people would think, and it's destroyed. You know, if you could fix that, you're also going to bring more people. Or if it has oil stains, you know, pressure wash and get that oil stain out. You know, that way it doesn't look like, you know, trash was parked there. It looks like, hey, this was a well-kept home. So here are my 11 tips on how to increase the value of your home. And in fact, when you're out looking at homes, I want you to see these things and see what people have done. And then you'd be like, you know what? Luis is right. I would rather go for a house that looks like this than a house that might be a little bit cheaper than I have to invest all this time. And you're going to be, you're going to see it's going to add a lot of value and you're willing to probably pay more for a house that has upgraded their curbside because you know if they did the outside, they mostly did the inside really well as well. So thank you for watching. Please like and uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and leave a comment of something you're interested in, you have a question about or anything, leave a comment below. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.